Please don't forget to like, subscribe and comment below. A bee is next to me sipping lavender tea. This bee, this bee appears to be very, very happy. The Chelsea pensioners won Britain's Got Talent. We attended the final shortly before lockdown. War heroes who engaged in combat to fight for our freedom. I wondered what future generations would make of us all here in 2020. What passing bells for these who die as cattle. Only the monstrous anger of the guns. Only the stuttering rifles rapid rattle. The much celebrated words of Wilfred Owen there. So I'm on my way to Slimming World. 2019, when my only anxiety was that I just had a McDonald's. Little did I know McDonald's would be shut for months. Oh, thank you. So we all followed that yellow brick road the year before in 2019. Little did we know what was around the corner for us in 2020. Before the pandemic, before Brexit, I wrote this. Didcot Tower Power. Once upon a time, in 2019, now 2080, 60 years ago I mean, Didcot generated electricity through three chimney cooling towers. They would pump out shit, I mean water vapour, for hours and hours. To wipe them off the map was part of the green generation plan. When the Big Bang occurred, some locals wept and were so upset you see some view the towers nostalgically, like a well-loved family pet. You see, the water vapour and concrete had always been there, generation after generation. A backdrop, a heartbeat, a symbol of love and their own creation. Directly after the bang, papers reported, Pine goes up. 49,000 homes without electric, neon blue flames. The official line, electricity board, and the council were never ever at blame. You see, no one noticed the one pylon that fed the town its electric. Dust on the cable was to blame. Directly after the bang at 7am, the world is going to end, my dog barks and barks and barks. No more Sunday line for Dad and our dog Spark. You see, the electricity went off with a spark. Parents took their kids to watch the explosion. For a lark. Then complained that they had dust in their cars as near the van they did park. Towers collapsing and crumbling fast. Tears and memories of loved ones past. Funeral ashes, I guess, if you ask. The concrete creatures were no more. Blasted with dynamite and now rubble on the floor. Dad teased. What landmark now will we use to get back in the car? Nearly home, Mum would smile as he saw the towers loom over fields from afar. Dad added, I'm sure we'll all get over it as our house prices soar. <laughs> Elsewhere, after the bang, a police siren challenged the bird whistling song. The alarmed animals we called birds fought back by whistling. <laughs> Two worlds had collided. Mum, God bless her soul, had hoped for the best of both. To the future, Dad was placed. Didcot had been well and truly gentrified and turned into a town. 
blazing sunshine after the blast, then a black cloud shower. Such was the saga of the 2019 Didcot Tower Power. This poem written and performed before the pandemic, it's rather chilling, isn't it? So a couple of weeks before the pandemic lockdown, we were hearing about coronavirus and these odd signs started appearing around Didcot and shops started to close down, which struck me as very odd indeed as the council had just invested in 21 shops and seven restaurants. Something was telling me, something was computing that our worlds were going to change forever. So much so that I actually filmed the posters and the closed shops as my sense of unease and questions about what was going on were building in my mind. Little did we know that schools were going to be shut, shops were going to be shut, restaurants were going to be shut, not just for days, but for months. At this time, it was beyond our understanding that we were going to be told to exercise for an hour a day. A shot there of an empty street, the irony of the months that followed. Even swimming pools were shut, although we were to find out that chlorine was actually a good weapon against coronavirus. I went to great lengths to catalogue these strange shop closures and signs. I knew something was about to happen, but I just couldn't put my finger on it. The looming clouds overhead suggested all was not well. Newspapers started to report about coronavirus and lockdown. Brexit would soon be a distant memory and this poem redundant. Before Christmas and before the pandemic back in December, Miss Shrub's nativity play was not going to plan this year. Church Hall had been double booked. As a polling station for Brexit's cheer. Miss Shrub's innkeeper door, cardboard, poster painted, was wobbling and about to fall. Back benches tried propping it up with no real commitment at all. Nigel Farage, the Brexit party, self appointed as Jason stuck his foot in the innkeeper's door. A toothless four-year-old innkeeper lisped. There's no room at the inn anymore. Shepherd's tea towers on their heads, and the star of them was stained and dirty. Conceptive leaders and shepherds of 70 had I started the role looking 30. But the shepherds did sing, all seated on the ground. Shepherds did. Watch their flocks pine out until Corbin stepped over preaching and pulled it all right. Let's be in silent night against their fight. Staples on King's homemade crowns were pinning off into the air. Joe Swanson lived down at Staple and Mildly her declare, Don't despair! But Ouch started stapling Kitty's crowns to head and hair. The kings did fight back, brandishing their audience of the war. The olden fountain, Royal Mountain, following yonder star. Except the star was on strike too. Her night shifts were long and she refused to sparkle and sing the Twinkle Twinkle song. I mean, the reviews. But the graduate paper, parents were whispering every other line to the news politician. Their eyes squinting in the stage light. Politicians not having scripts about what Brexit is and struggling with all their might. The Daily Lad, Green Party renamed Jesus Leaf to make him non binary rather than a bloke, but then, then told angels to chill out and gave them all a wacky wacky smoke. 
and there was more from the parents. Lids. Brexit, a time we completely forgot about over the pandemic. <laughs> this epic poem never saw the light of day as it depicted our current political scene and the chaos that ensued. I mean, the parents' review of the show was mixed to say the least. Many felt the shrub had gone a little off piece. Watching David Cameron had a fake cry. His wife Sam Camp called him saying something in dry. Toddler Florence weeping, why daddy, why did you suggest a referendum? She did sigh. Please don't forget to like, oh, subscribe and comment on my channel. Was that we would get billions to have our pop holes filled and make Jesus hear of millions. And if I did find out, it would be fine. Thanks for listening. God bless yourself. So the start of the pandemic, I already have various appointments that have been overdue and cancelled for some reason that I don't know about. And I'm already on a tall walking frame as opposed to trying to wall walk or walk unaided. So already my disability is suffering. So this year, 2020, I'm not even going to be able to get into the garden like previous years as there are steps down into the garden. The first few weeks, Even nay months of the pandemic, there was no talk of masks as of yet and I was beginning to panic. Styling. However, as it is, not before Wednesday the 13th of May. Step one, outdoor exercise is now unlimited as long as you socially distance. Two, you are now allowed to visit parks, walk, sunbathe and even barbecue as long as you socially distance. You can now drive to other destinations in England, no distance stated, but not Scotland or Wales, to exercise as long as you socially distance. You can now play sports, but only with people from your own household to reduce the chance of infection to others. Fines may be increased for people who ignore social distancing rules and take part in social gatherings. You can now start going back to work if you can't work from home and social distancing can still be met. Manufacturing and construction work were cited. You should try to avoid public transportation where possible, ideally walking or cycling to work if pra practical, if not then drive. Hello, so August 2020 here again. So back um, in the spring, Boris had also started to map out how he stored stage two and stage three going. Or the like. Um, however, I've just gone through step one. Step two, of course, which we're hoping for in June at the earliest here in the UK, the phased reopening of retail and some shop shops. So this is all June at the earliest. Look at getting primary schools back, but only reception year one and year six. Secondary school pupils will get some time with teachers before the holiday regarding exams. So that's step two. And so step one, which I presented in the previous episode, and step two, which I've just told you about, will be closely monitored before moving to step three, which will only happen if there is no major increase in infections. A major increase will result in return to lockdown status. Then, of course, we've got step three, which will be no earlier than July 2020, we've been told. So start to look at reopening hospitality and other public places that attract large gatherings, such as restaurants, cinemas, theatres, etc., um, leisure. And the above is staged over the next two months, basically. So stage two and stage three. So... In a nutshell, social distancing rules here in the UK stay in place and must be followed. Visiting other households is still not permitted. Social gatherings are still not allowed. You do not have to return to work if your place of work is not yet allowed to open or your employer chooses to remain closed. And restricted movement is not over. It has just been slightly relaxed to see if doing it has an effect on the 
reinfection rate, this R value, which is the buzzword here in the UK at the moment. So Boris um, made it clear if the steps are not met, then social distancing and restriction movement will carry on until the steps are met. Um, another buzzword that um, joined us here in the UK was stay alert. Don't know where they picked that one up, but remain aware and diligent that the virus is still a threat to your health and the health of others. Control the virus, continue to control the spread of the virus by adhering to social distancing guidelines. Avoid or restrict contact with others outside of your household and save lives. Do your part to help stop the spread of the virus to yourself and others. So that is kind of where we are here in the UK at the end of play today. It'd be really interesting to hear what's going on in Australia, America and Europe. So please do feel free to comment below on this post. I'd be fascinated to hear what your rules and policies are in your country at the moment as regards this. My show will now take a slightly darker journey, possibly not suitable for children, an ugly realism and a character called Jane. So it's now August 2020 and you will notice that I have aged by about 20 years. Um, very few hairdressers are open, beauticians aren't opened. Um, I'm lacking sunlight and oxygen, as you can just tell by looking at my skin. And my poems have taken a very different turn. Stay home, Grandma Iris, coronavirus. Stay home, Cousin Nathan, self-isolation. Stay home, Lise Divine, unprecedented time. Stay home, Aunt Tosh, alcoholic hand wash. Stay home, Brother Peter, distancing of two metre. Stay home, Mum L, alcoholic hand gel. Stay home, Dad Bing, mask wearing. Stay home, Mrs Wok, time bomb, tick tock. Stay home, Mr Bean, too late, ventilator machine. I actually ended up in hospital over the pandemic for three weeks because I fell over and fractured my good leg. And because the issues with my bad leg had not been seen to and I'd got outstanding bladder issues, it was considered that it was better for me to be in hospital as I was essentially bent bound and peeing myself, not to put too fine a point on it. Um, however, on a lighter note, I met some amazing people in hospital and here are some of their stories. No matter what happens in life, if you fail an exam or you leave your wife, you even stab someone with a knife. The moon is always there, giving out its friendly glow. When the moon started, nobody knows. It's always there for you to ponder and stare. I also had to go to the JR with a suspected DVT for one night, thereby hang the story. That's a video in its own right. But essentially I was on a ward with people with neurodifference, including many people in their 90s with neurodifference, such as dementia. And it made me reflect on elderly relatives that were no longer with us. Grandma never watched television and changed the channels. Grandma never had a mobile phone. Grandma thought that computers took up the whole room and were built for S Second World War, responsible for breaking the German code. Grandma never saw England win the World Cup. I wonder what things I will never see. The mind boggles. Over the pandemic, we were all writing our wills. We were... We were reflecting on the demise of our own parents or our partners or possibly our children. This disease was relentless. It struck down our Prime Minister, Boris Johnson. Um, it had struck down Prince Charles. It didn't discriminate. One woman in hospital reflected to me nostalgically upon her husband that has sadly departed. Buttons on a cardi. Race could not part with it. Smelt of soap powder, old polish and woodbind. Threads hanging off and a patch on the elbow. 
Still, she could not move it off the back of the chair. One weekend, parents took their children down to Bournemouth during the pandemic and were chastised. Why did they do this when we were told to socially distance and stay home? I can only think that parents were trying to recreate the fond, loving memories that they had of their own youth and their own childhood. What might these memories be? From the seafront souvenir shop, you select a bucket and net, rock pools, tiny crabs caught, put in a sandcastle bucket, fish and chips in vinegar, gulls dive bombing swooping down, sandy sandwiches, sandy hair and sand castles everywhere, waiting for the tide to come in for your moat. Watching the sandcastle melt, you use the bucket to bail out the water. You want the day to last forever. Shelter your ear and hear the waves, hear the sea. Tiny crabs released back into rock pools. In the car home, magical bright lights from the opposite direction. Cosy and content inside the car. At the beginning of March 2020, I could see so much that was going wrong when we looked across to China and wondered what the narrative of the UK 2020 would be. 2020, the high street has been locked down and we have been locked up. Please like, subscribe or comment depending on what social utility site you're viewing this show reel on. I'm looking to be booked for events either online or in person. My telephone number is UK 07710474848. And as they say, stay safe. TV, film and theatre of this will play the coronavirus murder mystery when we were locked away. Scene one, I write, how to assume it's a hoax. Coronavirus, we joke. I write, scene two, how not to have any tests after a UK patient is diagnosed. Too relaxed, easy, lazy and going with the flow, we supposed. Scene three, I write, how to miss thousands of cases of pneumonia and infect nurses, doctors and paramedics alike. Obsessed with mental health and not yelling, treat pneumonia, coronavirus into a moat. Scene four, how to delay and not issue lockdowns and social distancing. Bring in the military to sort out this money and organisational thing, I write. Scene five, how not to protect healthcare staff. Chasing around for PPE and scuba masks for a laugh. Scene six, how not to have mask shields and other personal protective equipment that the military have sent. Scene seven, how to not have beds and ventilators and other hospital equipment. Scene eight, how, how to relax things and spread the disease further. And breathe. We try and work towards a positive denouement here in the UK. We stay home at 8pm every Thursday. We clap on the doorstep. Scene 10, how to self-isolate. Hope you are locked in with your best mate. How to use a video phone. 80 year olds learn so they are not alone. So our scene looks down from afar to see what the mysteries are.